The Bringing Wetlands to Market project involves researchers from the Marine Biological Laboratory and the U.S. Geological Survey in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, and the University of Rhode Island. These researchers are working together to learn more about how tidal wetlands store greenhouse gases and how nitrogen inputs affect that storage. The data will then be used to develop coastal management tools to help protect and restore wetlands. Well, I hope that this data will um, be useful first for constructing the model. Um, you need input parameters in order to get output, and so we're giving as many input parameters as we can. In terms of policy, I, I think really you need firm numbers to know whether this great idea of restoring wetlands to sequester CO2, you know, what does that actually come down to? Many times, I guess, policy decisions would be based on the bottom dollar. So let's figure out what is the capacity to store CO2 um, and what's the potential benefit of minimizing nutrient loading? How much better does CO2 uh, sequestration get? And I think just having some quantitative information is always important for any decision-making process. For this project, we're gonna develop a new system to measure greenhouse gas emissions, three greenhouse gas emissions, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrogen oxide. And to do this, we will develop a new chamber, which is big chamber, two feet by two feet by two feet, covered in the soil marsh. And uh, we have a new uh, state of art of uh, laser-based instruments, which can uh, instantaneously measure the three, three gases. And we connect the instrument with those chamber and pump the air inside the chamber. The, the instrument will automatically record the increase of the greenhouse gases so that we can calculate how much gas flux is coming from the soil marsh. We designed the project so that we um, do these measurements across a nitrogen loading gradient. And so at the low end of the nitrogen loading gradient, we have the Sage Lot Pond site here, which has a largely forested watershed and nitrogen inputs from the landscape are, are low. At the next level, at the intermediate level, we have the Hamblin Pond site, which has a, a beautiful marsh and a, and a, and a moderate um, rate of nitrogen loading. And the other two sites at Eel Pond and Great Pond nearby here have very high housing density around them. The salt marshes are, are still beautiful settings, but what we don't know is, is whether this nitrogen loading uh, has affected the rate at which they store carbon. We're collecting as much data as we can about the soil properties. That includes salinity, uh, oxidation, reduction potential, pH. Uh, soil moisture content and uh, pore water nutrient concentrations, sulfide. Uh, and what we're trying to do is really figure out are there any simple proxies that can be used to indicate what sorts of salt marshes are sources of greenhouse gases versus uh, sinks. We're also quantifying the plant properties and looking at whether there are simple relationships between the types of species that are present that visibly can uh, be monitored quite easily um, compared to the biogeochemistry, which takes quite a bit more instrumentation and a lot of funding to measure. So if we can come up with some simple indicators, that would be ideal to help coastal managers. For the restoration community and the conservation community that wants to buy land, preserve land, or restore wetlands, um, this would be something that they could factor into their decision making, kind of um, the carbon sequestration potential for a piece of property, you could think about that. For agencies that are really thinking about climate adaptation and how to frame that in their decision making and how local or state decision makers have to factor that in, one aspect of this project would be revealing the importance that salt marshes play in sequestering greenhouse gases and also the need that uh, land use decisions need to take into consideration that salt marshes will need places to migrate to so keep up with sea level rise. So that's another thing that will come to the fore through this project. Um, so coming from the national, state and local level, there are different players that can really use this information and they're going to be looking at different slices of, of the results, I think.